Hey guys, so I know that this isn't the home studio office that maybe you were expecting to see, but it's a little bit hard for me to go in there right now because uh, I broke my leg and I don't feel comfortable sitting on the office chair. So my living room is gonna have to work, but I wanted to make this video because I saw a bunch of articles that Amazon is finally showing some renderings of its Project Kuiper user terminals. And a lot of those renderings look almost identical to the Starlink photos that we've seen. Of course, Starlink is active and very much used all around the world right now, but I also thought it was kind of funny. I have a LinkedIn connection with someone who works at SpaceX and I won't share their name, but they were definitely throwing shade. And I mean, they kind of have a good point. This employee wrote, now if only they could put some of their satellites up on a rocket. Wait, New Glenn. Amazon internet coming to you sometime in the next decade. Probably also delivered to the wrong address. Meanwhile, in the real world, go take a look at starlink.com for something that exists. I mean, he's not wrong. I did get a behind the scenes tour. I can't show you much of it, but I can show you some of it because we did get to see sort of the New Glenn operations in Florida. Hey guys, I'm here on Space Commerce Way and Exploration Parkway, and you can see behind me in the background, that is the Blue Origin facility here in Florida. In fact, about 2,200 employees work here at the Florida location. It has been rapidly expanding in recent years. We didn't get to take much footage inside, but here's what we are able to show you. Here we are walking into Blue Origin's 650,000 square foot complex, and this is where they're manufacturing, integrating, and will eventually operate New Glenn on Florida's Space Coast. Behind closed doors, we got to see the work being done on rocket stages, payload fairings, and adapters, which will be integrated only nine miles from the launch pad. The complex is also home to their launch and mission control centers, which we got to see as well, and unfortunately, I can't show you. According to their website, New Glenn will have a reusable first stage built for 25 missions. New Glenn is the big brother to New Shepard, which we got to see a glimpse of on our tour in the lobby. New Shepard being the suborbital rocket many celebs have gone to the edge of space in. New Glenn was announced in 2016 and is meant to compete with Falcon Heavy, but seven years later, we still haven't seen it launch. The first flight for New Glenn was scheduled for late 2021, but according to Wikipedia, now the first flight is planned for Q3 of 2024. Building the future by doing all the work to make exploration possible. Thank you for the peek at all you're doing. Astronaut Chris Hadfield towards Blue Origin October 7th last year. Cool. Look at his signature. Mm -hmm. You got like the the C and then the D and then, and then H. H yeah. Oh, that's cool. So Project Kuiper is Amazon's small, low-cost antennas, the rival to Starlink, and they claim that they'll bring fast, affordable broadband to customers and communities around the world. Much like Starlink, Project Kuiper is Amazon's low-Earth orbit satellite network. And just like Starlink, customers will install an outdoor antenna called a customer terminal, so not a user terminal, to communicate with satellites passing overhead. Their goal is to serve tens of millions of customers. They wanted to design a customer terminal that costs less than $500 to build. Amazon says Project Kuiper engineers hit that milestone in 2020. They say they invented a new antenna architecture that was smaller and lighter than traditional designs. Since then, they have been innovating and making the designs smaller and more affordable. So there are three engineering models that we're looking at. The first is designed for residential and small business customers. Project Kuiper's standard customer terminal measures less than 11 inches square and one inch thick. It will weigh less than five pounds without its mounting bracket. Amazon says this device will be one of the most powerful commercially available customer terminals of its size, delivering speeds up to 400 megabits per second. And Amazon expects to produce these terminals for less than $400 each. There will also be an ultra compact design to help connect even more customers. This will be a seven inch square design and it will be Project Kuiper's smallest and most affordable customer terminal. Now you remember me telling you 
that Starlink is also working on a mini user terminal. Well, Amazon says their mini customer terminal will weigh just one pound and offer speeds up to 100 megabits per second. Its portability and affordability will create opportunities to serve even more customers around the world. I have to admit, it is kind of cute. And there will be a high bandwidth design for the most demanding needs. This most capable model is designed for enterprise, government, and telecommunications applications that require even more bandwidth. This device will measure 19 inches by 30 inches and will deliver speeds up to one gigabit per second. Now, these customer terminals are powered by Amazon-designed baseband chips. These were developed under the code name Prometheus. Prometheus combines the processing power of a 5G modem chip found in moder modern smartphones. The capability of a cellular base station to handle traffic from thousands of customers at once and the ability of a microwave backhaul antenna to support powerful point-to-point -point connections and it packs all of that into a single custom chip but you can't just have one chip isn't that right in addition to being in project hyper's customer terminals prometheus is allowed to use project hyper satellites in ground gateway antennas allowing the system to process up to one terabit per second of traffic on board each satellite so of course many of you probably have amazon products like the echo dot and fire tv stick project hyper wants to scale up their infrastructure and they hope to have tens of millions of units available for customers so i'm really curious even if you have Starlink, how many of you are just going to switch over once this becomes active because it'll sort of fit in with your Amazon ecosystem. But the real question is when will Project Kuiper be active? Well, they're preparing to deploy the first two prototype satellites on the first flight of the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket. So good luck. Hopefully that works out. The upcoming mission will help Project Hyper engineers gain real-world data on how these systems perform in space and let them test the entire end-to-end -end communications network. And apparently Project Hyper is scaling operations in preparation for offering this commercial service. They recently began development of a dedicated satellite production facility in Kirkland, Washington. They expect to begin mass producing satellites by the end of 2023. And Project Kuiper expects to launch the first production satellites in the first half of 2024. They plan to give the earliest customers access to the service beginning later that year. Also, if you see me kind of readjusting and distributing my weight here, my injury is partial weight bearing. So I kind of just have a little tiptoe thing going on. Um, but, you know, I feel really bad not making content. I mean, I know everyone's been so understanding of the fact that like I broke my leg. I didn't even like sprain it. I don't have a cast. There's like a rod in my leg and I went through major surgery and you know, it's like such an inconvenience. <laughs> But no, really, I, I'm very grateful to be alive. Um, this is really hard on me. I'm a very active person. I love to be outside. Um, and right now, I cannot do that. So hopefully things get better. But, um, you know, I know that so many of us are Amazon users. I have a Prime account myself. I don't use Amazon probably as much as most people, but I want to know when this is active, is this something that you would be interested in signing up for using the Project Kuiper service? Or do you agree that this really won't be active for a long time? So I will be making a video about like how this happened. <laughs> um, I'm working on that. In fact, I called the rock climbing gym to see if they had any footage of the fall, not to sue them. I made sure to make that apparent on the phone call, but just to see kind of if the break happened as my memory recollects it happened as I was twisting on the wall and the leg snapped and they don't have any cameras. So we're gonna just have to piece the story together with what we do have, but um, yeah, it's really like crazy how you can go from kind of complaining about like stupid mundane things. Oh, I'm stuck in traffic. Oh, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then you break your leg. And by the way, whoever made up that saying, break a leg. Uh, uh, I hate that saying. <laughs> like, I hate it almost as much as I hate the I shot the sheriff jokes about my last name. My last name is Sheriff. It's not space. If you were curious. But 
Um, yeah, a lot of people have been commenting, you know, they didn't mean it literally when they said brick a leg. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Ha 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 ha. Anyway, um, I'm, I may be a little bit more like feisty in these videos because I am sitting at home all day. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Another really great takeaway I think from all of this is that pretty sure I don't want to wear fake eyelashes anymore. You guys seem to indicate that you don't like them anyway. And um, I put a video up when I had no, no makeup on and my PJs and you guys were like, you look great. So I think we can finally say like, I'm not only not wearing foundation anymore, which I wore a lot of that because of TV news, but screw the fake eyelashes, okay? These, these here are my eyes. <laughs> and if I don't have to do more work, I won't. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is it for this video. I am planning on doing a long form interview with Corey Steuben next week. If you don't know who he is, he works with Sandy Monroe with Monroe Live and Monroe and Associates. And um, I had him in my live stream when I was in the hospital. People are asking where the full interview is. We haven't really done a full interview. He just kind of popped in. So we're gonna do a full interview. So if you have any questions for Corey, leave them in the comments. Thank you so much to everyone who is supporting this channel. I appreciate you, um, you know, waiting on me to make content. It's the game has changed a little bit, but, um, it, it really means a lot to connect with you guys. So love you all.